Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Tinker Edge R. Now, I wouldn't call this a follow-up to the original Tinkerboard because the Tinkerboard 2 is going to be released soon and we will be taking a look at that on the channel. This is kind of its own thing and I've been really excited about getting my hands on this. Now, this is an ARM-powered single board computer. We got 4 gigs of RAM, a 6-core CPU up to 1.8 gigahertz, built-in 16 gigabytes of eMMC storage, it's got a full-size HDMI port, 3 USB 3.2 ports, USB Type-C, an M.2 slot, it does come pre-installed with a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module, and on the bottom, it actually has a mini PCIe slot. Now, we've actually taken a look at a few of these boards that are powered by the same CPU. This is actually the RK3399, but this is the Pro version, which contains its own dedicated NPU, a neural processing unit, and it actually has its own dedicated RAM. It's got 2 gigs of LPDDR3 specifically for the NPU. As of making this video, there's only two operating systems available for this board right now, and I'm waiting for ARMBN to release something, but right now they have a Debian 9 build and an Android 9 build, and in this video we're going to take a quick look at both of those. Inside of the box, along with the Tinker Edge R, you're going to get a couple camera cables. These are just extension cables here. We'll also get our Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antenna, and a little bit of mounting hardware for that PCIe slot that's on the bottom of this board. When it comes to the ASUS Tinker line, the build quality on these boards has always been top notch. As you can see here, we have that GPIO layout just like the original Tinker board or the Raspberry Pi, 40 GPIO pins. This does come pre-installed with a Wi-Fi slash Bluetooth card, 802.11ac and Bluetooth 5.0. Unfortunately, the board doesn't come with a power supply, but it's got a wide input range, anywhere from 12 to 19. It's got a 5.5mm power jack here, and it also has a 4-pin power connector right beside that in case you want to use this to power the board up. As you can see, we have full-size HDMI, it does have Gigabit Ethernet, 3 USB 3.2 ports, and 1 USB Type-C port which supports OTG and Display Out, not to mention a 3.5mm audio jack right on the board. It supports two CSI lanes, so you can add two cameras to this unit, or you can switch one of these CSI lanes over to DSI for a display out. Plus, it also has a dedicated display out connector. So when it's all said and done and everything's activated, you can have up to three displays on this unit. One over HDMI, one over USB Type-C, and one over that DSI connection. It does have that mini PCIe slot on the bottom here. Unfortunately, I can't get any GPUs to detect in here. I think it's made more for a 4G module that you can add to this unit because it does have a dedicated SIM card slot right out of the box. And we also have that micro SD card slot in case you want to run your operating system from there or just add a little more storage. As for the form factor, it is a bit bigger than the Raspberry Pi 4, but not by much. It's still a very small PC when all things are said and done. Moving over to the main specs here, the CPU is that RK3399 Pro. This is a 6-core ARM CPU. We have two ARM Cortex-A72 cores at 1.8 and four ARM Cortex-A53 cores at 1.4. The GPU is the Mali-T860 MP4 up to 800 megahertz. We have four gigabytes of dual-channel LPDDR4 for system memory and an extra two gigabytes of LPDDR3 dedicated for the MPU. It's got 16 gigabytes of onboard eMMC storage. You can run your operating system from there, and I would definitely recommend it. It's going to be much faster. But we also have that micro SD card, which it can boot from if you really want to do that in a pinch. 802.11ac Wi Fi and Bluetooth 5.0 is handled by that M.2 card. And the operating systems we have right now, as making this video Debian 9, which is Tinker OS, and Android 9. So the first thing I did was install Android 9 to the internal eMMC. I want to see how it performs there, and then we'll move over to Debian 9 and take a look at that. All right, so here we are. I've got Android 9 installed. This is the image available from the Tinkerboard website or the ASUS website. As you can see, we have the Tinker Edge R. The CPU is at RK3399 Pro, and it only clocks up to 1.8 gigahertz. The GPU is the Mali-T860. And as you can see here, we're running Android 9, but the security patch on this is a little over a year old on it. I really wish there was an Android 10 build available for this, but unfortunately, as it sits right now, there's basically two operating systems that work with the Tinker Edge R as of making this video. And the version of Android doesn't come with Google Play installed. I used an older method on getting this up and running, and unfortunately, after it updates the Google services in the background, it stops. If I clear the cache with Google services, it will work. But every time I launch the Play Store and close it back down, I have to reboot the unit. So I just sideloaded a third-party app store so we can get some stuff up and running here and see how it performs. Now, as for video playback on this unit, it actually works really well. I've had good luck in the past with these RK3399 boards. 
This is YouTube Vanced. It'll work without Google Play services installed or working properly, but we can only get 1080p out of this board right now. And I did try this on a 4K monitor just to make sure it wasn't locked at 1080p because of my display. But at 1080p, we have really good performance here. So hopefully down the road, somebody comes up with another build of Android with Google Play installed or an easy way to install a proper version on here so we can download all of our favorite streaming apps. And if we're able to at least jump up to 1080p with it, it will work fine with basically any video player app. Moving over to a couple benchmarks. First up, we have Geekbench 5, single core, 256, multi, 683. In my opinion, this is pretty low on the scale given the price of the Tinker Edge R. Because, I mean, when it comes down to it, I've tested out cheaper prepaid Android devices that score much higher than this. I'm talking Android devices that cost $50 to $80. I was also able to run 3D Mark Slingshot. This build of Android doesn't have Vulkan support and it's actually only supporting an older version of OpenGL, so they definitely need to fix this up. But on the OpenGL side for Slingshot, the score really isn't that bad for a single board computer. A lot of these native Android games I was able to install and test actually perform really good. This is Real Racing 3. It's definitely a very optimized game, but it's just an easy one to install, and it works without Google Play services. So this is kind of my go-to for these type of Android devices. But yeah, I mean, it's definitely running at full speed, and it looks great. Next up, we have Minecraft. I did turn fancy graphics off, and I have it set to 8 chunks. Still experiencing some lag when we're moving kind of fast here, but overall, in the end, this is Minecraft, and I'd say this is playable. Moving over to some emulation, first up we have Dreamcast using ReDream. I'm upscaled to 1280 by 960 and everything's running great. I do have the FPS up in the top left hand corner. I would suspect that a few games might not run properly at this resolution, but if we drop it back down to the native res, it should work just fine. But overall, as it sits right now, I mean we're getting some really good Dreamcast performance out of this board. Just wanted to test one more here, Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Still using the ReDream emulator, upscaled to 1280 by 960 and we're getting full speed out of this one. Next on the list, PSP using PPSSPP. This is Tekken 6, we're at 2x resolution, no frame skip, no hacks. Really great performance here. In the past, on these RK3399 boards, I've actually had pretty decent luck with PSP, but when it comes to the harder to emulate stuff, it's just not going to cut it. Now, there are some hacks that you can run with Chains of Olympus to get this to run at 20 FPS, but I don't think 20 FPS is playable for a game like this, so I would kind of just stay away from it. I'm at 1x resolution here, no frame skip. Let's go ahead and turn some frame skip on. And even with frame skip enabled, as you can see, it's still pretty slow. I've just always run into issues with these harder to run games on this chipset here. This version of Android that we have here is 64-bit, so we are able to run 64-bit apps. I figured I'd go ahead and test out some GameCube using Dolphin. But as soon as we launch it, up in the top left hand corner, it tells me that the OpenGL driver needs to be updated, and it states that I'm going to have terrible performance on this unit because of that fact. So I went with a really easy game to emulate, which is Alien Hominoid, and we can't get full speed out of it. I also tested games like Automotilista, and it runs at about 20 FPS, so GameCube and Wii on this is going to be a no-go. And keep in mind, I'm using the OpenGL back in here because we don't have Vulkan enabled in this build of Android yet. So before we wrap this video up on the Tinkerboard R, I did want to test out the Debian build that they have available on their website. I've actually had this up and running for 2 hours and 27 minutes. Looks like after sitting for a while, it starts to eat up a little bit of memory. I haven't done much here. I've run Chrome, I've installed Firefox, and that's about the extent of it. But this thing has 4 gigs of RAM. This should be a very lightweight operating system. And we're using 2.5 right now. A little odd there. But I mean, overall, the whole desktop experience has been pretty smooth here. Like I mentioned, I did install uh, Firefox here. We also have Chromium. I've went through and I did install GIMP here. Let's just take a look at this real quick.
And keep in mind, this is all running from the internal eMMC storage. It's 16 gigabytes on this board here. Let's go ahead and just open up a large file. And everything's super smooth here with GIMP. So if I want to just select by color here and do some deletion by color, we'll just choose one of these here. Now if I go through and cut, it's only going to cut that color out, but it does it really fast. I mean, it doesn't have to take long to find that exact color throughout this picture and delete it for me. And on other lower end single board computers, this usually takes a little while to do. So let me check this out one more time by color. We'll choose another one here. I'm just going to scan through that photo and find that exact color to cut them out. So I mean, photo editing on this like it sits isn't bad at all. And this was definitely not a benchmark. This was just a quick test I wanted to show you. Next up, let's check out some video playback from YouTube. We'll just open up the Chromium browser. One thing I did notice is H264ify actually gives me a bad issue. It'll just go blank screen when I have block 60 FPS video on. So first thing I want to test here is a 1080p. Uh, it's 24 FPS. It's not quite 30, but this does 1080p at 30 pretty well. But when it comes to 720 and 1080p at 24 to 30 FPS, this board can handle it just like it sits. And I personally have no doubt that this can handle 1080p 60 playback, but the way this operating system is set up right now, it doesn't do a great job. And I've had this issue on a lot of these RK3399 boards. So we'll move over to another video real quick. And we'll just make sure we're doing a 1080p 60 here. Ten-eighty p sixty. It's just gonna keep dropping. If we take a look up here. And if I go full screen with it, it's just gonna drop even more. And even at 720p 60 still has an issue and it really comes down to those Mali drivers those GPU drivers that are never present within a build on the RK3399 so really when it comes to a desktop operating system on the Tinker Edge R I need to wait we got to get an ARM BN build for this thing just to get some stuff working a little better I completely understand that this is a newer board I believe this is the second release of this desktop operating system when it really comes down to it, the RK3399 CPU has been out for a while now. I believe close to two years. So I was pretty much expecting some really good performance out of this operating system right here, especially given the price of the Tinker Edge R. I'll definitely come back to this in the future. I got a bunch of benchmarks that I want to run, and I kind of want to face this off against the Raspberry Pi 4 and the Odroid C4. So just keep an eye out on the channel because in the next week or so, I'll have some more time to mess around with this specific operating system. And hopefully by then we get a build of ARM BN that'll work on this board. So overall, what we have here is a decently specced out ARM based single board computer. And in the future, I think this can perform really well, but we're very limited by software. And that seems to be the case with a lot of these single board computers when they're released and sometimes even years after they're released. Now I think what's gonna happen here is the Tinkerboard 2 is gonna be released. It's gonna be a much lower price point than this thing here. And the community is gonna create some awesome operating systems for that, which then can be ported over to this. But right now I think the Tinker Edge R is just a bit too expensive for hobbyists to get their hands on and start messing around with it. When that Asus Tinkerboard 2 is released, I will have a video on it. And hopefully a lot of developers can get their hands on that one and just start pumping out some really awesome operating systems for it. But until then, I'm going to be messing around with the Debian build we have available for the Tinker Edge R and just see what I can do with it. Like I mentioned, I wanted to run some benchmarks and kind of face it off against the Pi 4 and the Odroid C4. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. If there's anything you want to see running on this unit, just let me know in the comments below and I'll try my hardest to get it up and running on this thing. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.